Hey y'all, welcome back to another video of Life and Crime. Didn't think I would be back so soon, huh? Well, I am back and I got another video for y'all. This video today, we're going to be talking about Deidre Lane. Deidre was born in South Carolina in 1975 to Darlene Gary and Charles Gary. I was able to find that she had two siblings, two brothers. I'm not sure if she had other siblings, but the ones that I did find. She had a, a brother, Charles Jr. And then she has another brother named John Brandon Gary. We'll talk about him a little bit later. It was said that her family was established and um, towards her adult life, she had a son and her son name was Grant. Now, even though it was said that Deidre's family was financially established, in 1995, she would end up being arrested for attempted robbery. It was said that she actually walked into a bank and told the teller to give her the money. She demanded money and that she had a gun. However, she ended up walking out the bank without any money and she was arrested 20 minutes later. Now, she didn't get convicted for this charge. It was said that she completed like some type of program, but she didn't serve any jail time or anything like that. She, it was pretty much a slap on the wrist, really. December of 1997, Deidre, she would meet then 22 year old NFL player, Fred Lane Jr. Fred, who was born September 6, 1975 in Franklin, Tennessee, attended Franklin High before going to Lane College. Football was Frank's life. His father, Fred Sr., was also a known football player running back in Tennessee. In 1997, Fred would sign as an undrafted free agent by the Panthers. So he hasn't been really in the NFL that long, maybe like a few months, when he met Deidre. Ten months after meeting each other at a bar with friends, they would end up getting married and Deidre would be Deidre Lane. This was definitely a shock to Fred's family, friends, and even his girlfriend at the time who had a daughter by, by Fred. It was kind of like Deidre popped out of nowhere. Like, you know, it was kind of like, well, who is this chick? Like, who is this girl? It, it was just like that fast. According to Fred's friend, family, and even teammates. His marriage to Deidre was not healthy. People would state that Deidre was abusive to him. He would actually come in to work and practice with scratches and bumps on his face, resulting to fighting. There was also talks of the couple not being faithful to each other. That was kind of fuming. Deidre also had a terrible spinning habit. I mean, the girl would spin like it was no tomorrow. And that definitely put an effect on their marriage as well. Fred actually signed to the Panthers. It was a $1.6 million contract. And it's probably not the big, the biggest NFL contract, obviously. But, I mean, $1.6 is still a lot of money. And by the time 1998 came around, which was a year after being signed to the Panthers, Fred was in a in a bad financial state i mean at the time he was paying child support for his daughter he had one daughter um and he was caring for deidre and her son grant so that definitely put him in a tight place because of deidre's spending not only did he have problems at home but he definitely did have problems at work in the 1998 season he was suspended for a lewd gesture at a game um, I think he scored like a touchdown in a New York Giants game and then they just suspended him for that and then he was also demoted to the special teams duty after missing a team flight to Dallas 1999 he would actually have his second daughter on the way but it was not from Deidre it was said that during that time when he um, perceived his second daughter him and Deidre was not together. They were actually separated. 
and um by the end of 1999 though Deidre will also be pregnant and this would be his actual third child but some speculation that they didn't necessarily believe that he was the father of Deidre's baby it was some rumors that she could have been having an affair but not only have an affair but an affair with another panthers football player on february 3rd 2000 fred was pulled over and arrested for possession of marijuana and possession of weapon ultimately the weapon charge was dropped in march deidre filed a complaint against fred at the altercation but no charges was made on that complaint during his offseason fred was traded to the colts with a six hundred thousand signing bonus i think at the time and that's just my this is just my opinion after him being traded i think that the panthers was pretty much trying to clean their image this was around the time ray Carruth was arrested and charged with murder i was back in 99 so I'm not saying I'm oh, not comparing him to Karuth, because he's not a Karuth at all. But I think with him being arrested for those possession of marijuana and all that stuff, it was them trying to, I guess, shape up the, the image that was been going on with the headlines between the whole Karuth situation. With the sign-in bonus from the Colts, Fred was still having financial problems. A large amount of money was gone missing from the accounts and he did ask Deidre about that. Deidre, she would turn around and say, well, I'm giving it to the financial advisor. Fred, he did double check with the financial advisor to see if that was true. And it was confirmed that it was not true. One day, Fred was at home watching TV when he heard a gunshot and he immediately runs to the room and sees Deidre holding a 12 gauge shotgun in their room it was never explained why she shot in the house with this shotgun he was around this time telling his family and friends that he was just over Deidre and wanted to move on and wanted to file for divorce but Fred was also holding a secret that he eventually told a friend he ended up telling his friend that he knew Deidre had something to do with a bank robbery and he was not lying. So three months before they actually got married, they were in a relationship, but they wasn't married yet. But it was three months before they got married in 1998. Deidre walked into a Wachovia bank, which was eventually turned into Wells Fargo that we know today. She walked into a Wachovia bank went to a, a teller that was happened to be her best friend and she told the teller when she actually handed her a note saying that she had a gun and demanded money and she ended up walking out the bank with over forty one thousand dollars and like i said this was three months before she was married to fred and he had speculations or at least had speculations or no that she was involved and that was her that did this crime. Between May and June of 2000, Deidre, she did make a life insurance policy for both her and Fred worth $5 million. One night while Fred was sleeping, and this was in June, Fred was sleeping and he woke up seeing Deidre standing over him with a gun to his head. She ended up asking him, have you ever thought what it was like to die? But she told him. Fred did tell his father about this and he advised Fred to leave. Like he needed to go. And that's exactly what he did. He did end up packing all this stuff and leaving. Now mind you, Deidre is still pregnant with their daughter. And she's still pregnant and she's like weeks away from giving birth. She did request to her doctor to be induced and she did let Fred know that she's been induced and he did say that he was going to come, come back home to, to North Carolina. Fred Sr., he did speak out about how he preferred his son, Fred, 
to not go back to North Carolina alone. He wanted him to have someone with him. He did. Fred did take his brother and his friend with him when he went back, back in town for the baby to be born. When, when it was time for Deidre to have the baby, he did have his brother with him and a friend. Um, they was there for a brief time before they went all went back to Tennessee. But July 6, 2000, he did tell his family, hey, I do need to fly back to to the Carolina state to, you know, try to figure out how I'm going to be able to get some more money. Because like I said, he was still in this financial hardship. So he did tell his father, hey, I want to. I want to go back to the back to the house. There's a motorcycle I got. I'm gonna see if I can try to sell it to come up with some more money. He didn't really like that plan, only because he was flying alone, and he really just didn't trust him being alone with Deidre, which I can understand. I mean, the girl, what what she did. Fred actually did fly back to Carolina, North Carolina, and. The flight was actually purchased. The ticket was actually purchased from, from Deidre. So she knew he was coming. He did fly back home. And when he arrived home, the moment he opened the door and entered his home, he was shot in the chest and shot again in the head, ultimately killing him. Now, a 911 call was made and it was from Deidre. And she was crying. She was scared. She told the dispatcher that she shot Fred because she was trying to get him off of her. I was reading articles and they were pretty much describing in that 911 call, which was 11 minutes, what was going on and what she was saying. And pretty much she stated that, you know, she just was trying to defend herself. He wasn't arrested at first, but they were still just looking into it, you know, seeing what was going on, what happened. So for the first month, she was a free woman. And during that time of her being free after the shooting, she did went ahead and contact the life insurance that she went to make that policy on that Fred didn't really know. And it was speculations that he didn't sign the policy. For her to have that as a beneficiary but yeah she went ahead and filed a claim on that but before anything can go further with that claim she was originally arrested for the murder of fred lane jr the murder of fred wasn't the only thing that they was investigating that involved miss d that best friend that was the teller at wachovia she was actually being questioned as friend she let them know that it was her and Deidre that was involved in playing this whole thing out. And crazy enough, they actually let her go and went back and arrested Deidre for that robbery. Now, there was no bond set for the robbery, so she was stuck there. She couldn't, you know, get herself bonded out, which I think her parents had something to do with her being bonded out the first time. But they can't bail her out this time. They had her there. Mm. In 2003, a plea deal was made, and Deidre, she did took she did take that plea deal, and decided to plead guilty for manslaughter. She eventually was sentenced to seven years and 11 months in prison. She was also sentenced for the four months for the the bank the bank incident with her best friend. That was actually time served because of I mean four months. She was actually. She received time served before she even received the sentence for the murder for Fred. That was a big disappointment to family and friends of Fred. Um, and a lot of times when it comes to charges being dropped and they're pleading manslaughter or whatever, it could be that the prosecution may not have the confidence that she would be found guilty for the murder people gave that aside i believe no this was premeditated and me just reading the court records and all the articles and things that she did prior to the shooting of fred i personally believe that this was premeditated and little miss lane here she got off really easy it was another slap on the wrist 
and it was sad unfortunately because Fred had three daughters and he was only 24 he was only 24 so that was sad by March 3rd of 2009 Deja was a free woman a few years later it was back in 2013 um, news came out that she was working at a children's camp with another convicted murderer and that was like the last like update of Deidre there was nothing else that came out of it as far as the life insurance policy that five million dollar life insurance policy that she made a month before killing Fred um, a judgment was settled because Fred's father and one of the mother of Fred's daughters actually filed a lawsuit um, against the insurance company. But the insurance company didn't think it was valid, obviously because of the fact that it was a premeditated murder. So they didn't want to pay out to the, benef the beneficiary, which was Deidre. But they end up suing the company saying that it should be valid for Fred's children and his family, not Deidre. However, so that in the policy that if Deidre wouldn't be able to receive it, the second beneficiary would actually be Grant, which is her son. Um, there was nobody else on the policy, but just them two. But a judgment was made for $4 million and $4 million to be split between his three daughters and it was saying a small portion of that settlement or that that life insurance payout was supposed to be for grant that was it that was uh the life of crime of deidre which that was you know i just realized I'm like even though they said that the life insurance policy was for the daughters i mean she got out in 09 so technically she still she still had two kids that received portion of that policy so it was like it may not be the five million that she was hoping for but she got i'm sure she got s some of that maybe this is a sad situation that i was gonna mention the brother her brother her younger brother he was actually 21 when he was sentenced to 114 years for guess what bank robbery so between 1998 and 1999, he actually robbed five banks and in total stole over $300,000. And he was eventually caught and sentenced to 114 years for bank robbery. It's strange that he pretty much got life for bank robbery and his sister gets seven years for manslaughter and got some money out of it too technically indirectly but technically she did that was a life of crime of of Deidre Lane